Hello everybody out there in YouTube land. Uh, this is Choctaw Clover, Jessie Ann, checking in. I know it's been a while. Um, <clears throat> kind of, you know, sorry for the clearing my throat allergy season. Um, so what I'm doing today is I am processing dentilium shells. Uh, hard to get them to focus there on the camera. But these are what I use. I use them in fringe and some other pieces, necklaces sometimes. And so I just wanted to show you, uh, you know, the work that goes into processing these. And in case you're interested in uh, working with shells on your own. There's a number of different ways that people do this. Um, this is just how I personally do it. Um, so these are from Shipwreck Beads. They're three quarter to one inch dentillion pieces. Um, in case you're wondering, dentillion, they're a uh, mollusk, a uh, marine mollusk, and dent, like dental toothed shell. Uh, they were a traditional like barter trade item in pre-colonial times, especially on the west coast, and they were used uh, like straight up for trade and also in jewelry, like necklaces, breastplates, earrings, all that. And they're pretty popular in today's modern native beadwork. So I always, when working with shells, try to work with them in water that keeps the dust down. You really don't want to breathe in the dust or get it in your eyes. Uh, it's hazardous. So um, I use a glass nail file. This is just one that I got on Amazon. It's like $10. Um, and I use a pair of nail clippers to clip the tops. So I'll show you here. I've clipped the top of this one so that way the opening is big enough to pass a needle or like a header eye pin through. But I want to even out the edges so they lay flat against whatever bead or whatever I'm working with. And so I put the file down in the water and then just kind of back and forth. And once it's wet, like that kind of contains the dust so I can like pull it up and look and the dust isn't flying everywhere. And uh, just kind of dry it off. I work on a, uh, just an old handkerchief here. Just want to even off that top. You especially want the any place where thread may rub against it. You want it to be smooth because you don't want it to cut your thread. So there you go. So and then um, so you see here. I've just. Like, I dumped out a big pile, and then I kind of pulled... I've got varying sizes here, but ones that'll all work together. There were a lot of, like, really short pieces, like, shorter than these. I just kind of threw them back in the bag. I'll do something with all of those together later. But, um, so now I'm just gonna work through these. That totally flew somewhere so. 
think then you just want to wash it off. And lay them there to dry. And then you just have to do this for every single piece. <laughs> um, clip the top. <sighs> Looks like there's something in there. Sometimes if you... You know, sometimes they're blocked with like little bits of sand or gravel or like other bits of shell. And you can just take like a beading needle or a, a pin, like a head pin, and poke it through to make sure that it's clear. So, just grab the needle. Yep, oh, that one's clear. All good. So yeah, this is a it's a pretty time consuming process. Um, but if you want to use centillium, it's what you have to do. And there are bigger, better pieces of dentillium out there. A lot of people, you know, the green ones, or that are like you know two or three inches long. Uh, those are pretty hard to come by right now, for whatever reason, uh, just the popularity in beading and dentillium shell stuff right now, but these are about the only pieces that I can find are the one, uh, the three quarter to one inch pieces. So... See, that one's quite big, that opening, so I don't have to clip it off. Sorry. And uh, the bottom just needs a little evening out. Yeah, so if you've ever wondered, like, huh, why does a uh, dentilling jewelry cost? As much as it does, it's multifaceted. There's a kind of a shortage out there right now of dentillium available. And what is available requires quite a bit of work to get it um, to where it looks good, usable. So. You know, you just uh, file them down until they're even. Okay. So, I feel like this. I don't know if you can see it there. That's blocked. So I'll take a, a needle and just try to. Oh, this one's blocked on this end too. Oh, there it goes. Then it's still blocked at the short end, so I may just clip it off. A lot of times when it's a uh, when it's blocked, it's easier. And trying to like jam it out with a pin, just there you go. Let's make sure that's clear. Yes. Just a little piling on the top there just because I uh, clipped it. So, all right, so that's uh, kind of the basics on how you process dentilium. Uh, just in case you were wondering. Um, so, 
I don't think you probably want to watch any more of this. As you can see, that's what I've gotten done in 10 minutes, and I have this left to do. So, uh, thank you for watching. Hit the like button if you like what you saw or if it was helpful for you. Um, subscribe if this is your jam. Uh, that would mean so much to me uh, if you subscribed. So thank you, and I'll see you all later. Bye. Happy beating.